So I will talk about uh, also another reachability problem on temporal graph graphs. Uh, if there are any questions, because I see a chat sign is on, George will read it, okay? And everything else I assume is not important to us. So far, nothing relevant to, to the speakers. Good. I don't know how to make this smaller, because maybe if I... <coughs> More height. No, but this is the video panel. Height floating control. For us, everything is fine. What 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 is the problem? For us, it's not okay. Now it's perfect. Nothing. Okay. Everything works, and I'm here. Okay. So thank you, Edward, for a nice introduction. I will use some of your attention and definitions that was, were presented by him. So I will skip through mine. So. Yeah, as I said, this is a joint work with Hendrik, George, and Paul, and all of the three guys are here. So you can also ask them about anything. And okay, so as I said, at the beginning, I will just go fastly through notation and our problem definitions. And then I will show you some of our results, Not, nothing too much. But at any point, if there are any questions, please just ask. Uh, okay. We are on a temporal graph workshop, so I'm just giving you my definition or basically not a definition, but notation because I assume you know everything. So for us, temporal graph is gonna be a pair, G and Lambda, and Lambda is just a labeling function. And uh, when I say that two vertices are temporally connected, that means that there exists a temporal path from one vertex to another. And a graph is temporally connected if there exists a temporal path among all vertices. And I have here in a footnote that paths are strict, which means exactly as Edward said, we can traverse at most one edge at one time step, I mean, in one path. So each edge takes one unit of time. And then we have some uh, subset of vertices, R, we call them terminal vertices. And then we say that our graph is gonna be R temporally connected, basically means these vertices have to have a temporal path among each other. For others, I don't really care, but these definitely have to. And of course, these temporal paths can include other vertices. Um, I will give you a small example, but I, I guess you understand it. If I have just a normal path and my two endpoints are in the set R, then of course, temporal path is gonna go through all of the vertices, no? But these two are the, the terminal ones important. Okay. Maximum label that we are we are using on a temporal graph is we're gonna call it H and we denote by alpha. Um, the total cost of a graph, if I ever talk about cost, how we are gonna here um, measure how good our results are, we just count all the labels we are using. So if I have two edges and I use one and two here and two and three here, my total cost is four, even though two was used on both of them and each and I have only two edges, total cost is four. So on each edge, count everything that you put on. That's gonna be the cost. And with this kappa, G alpha, we are gonna denote like the minimum cost of a temporal graph G lambda. So lambda is a specific labeling. So a graph, a temporal graph, and kappa G alpha is gonna be, what is the cost of this graph where the maximum label we are allowed to use is alpha. So the age of our graph is gonna be alpha, at most alpha. Okay, so I assume, are there any questions up now? No, we kind of get it, okay. Edward did us a favor before, so we can breeze through it now. We were studying four different problems, but this one was the basic one. So we are given a graph, a static graph, and um, then and an integer k. And now I ask you, can you use at most k labels, which means uh, with multiplicities, how many you use them on each edge, so that the cost is at most k, such that all vertices become temporarily connected. Everyone can reach each other. So idea is, yeah, just you give me a graph and give me a number, and I will try to find that labeling, or I will try to determine if I can find it or not. And then we took this a step further, and we said, okay, I give you one extra task the maximum lab label you can use is alpha. So I give you the age of your graph. Your graph cannot be like infinitely big or infinitely old, yeah. Um, how is this a bit different than what uh, Edward was telling us right now is that in his case, graph was labeled and you were changing labels. In my case, my graph is unlabeled and you ask me, can you use the minimum number of labels? 
I mean, okay, this is a decision problem, which you give me a K, but if we make it into optimization one, we would ask what is the minimum number of labels you can use. And similarly as this, we defined a problem minimum Steiner labeling, which is you give, you give me a graph, a normal static graph, an integer K saying, can you use at most these labels? But now you don't care that every vertex reaches each other. You give me also some subset of vertices, some terminals and say, can you connect them among each other? Like temporarily connect. And we named it Steiner labeling because it kind of reminds me, it reminds us of a Steiner tree problem, no? Because in a Steiner tree, you want to find a tree that goes to specific terminals. And again, we have the H version also for this one, which is asking basically, okay, do the same thing, but graph cannot graph, you can use, there is a bound on what is the maximum label you can use. Okay, I will give you a small example now before we go through. So for the minimum labeling without Steiner, or it doesn't matter. If again, I have a path on two vertices, two, sorry, three vertices, two edges. And then if I want to come from, let's say they're called A, B, and C. I want to come from A to C and my, uh, and from C to A. All vertices want to reach each other actually. So my uh, labeling here, if I say graph is unbounded H, has a number unbounded H, you can use whatever you want. One would be, let's say at time one and two, I come here. At time two, I use the same edge and at three, I go back. So I see I used two labels here and one label here. So three was my optimal labeling. But now I gave you H and let's H let's be two because two is a diameter. So at least I need the diameter. And I say, okay, what if your H is two? Then I go one and two here. If I use two back, I can't reach, endpoints can't reach each other. So I have to use one and two again. So already on a small path, we see that there, there is a difference. And that is something that we were interested in. Yeah, and our results. So um, in the case where, uh, we have unrestricted H, so and you're just giving and your condition is connect every vertex among each other. We found a polynomial time algorithm, um, and interestingly, interest, interestingly, okay, <laughs> if um, I we restrict the H, so I say you give me a graph and say the maximum uh, label you can use is alpha, which has to be at least diameter, because if it's not diameter, then two vertices will not reach each other. In this case, we come to, uh, we found out that the problem is empty complete. And I didn't include a slide about open problems. So I will just point it out here that for unbounded H, you use whatever labels, it's polynomial time solver, it's easy for, uh, bound, so bounded H of a graph, it's hard, it's empty hard. Where is the, difference here what happens when i don't know the the maximum label you can use is i don't know like two times diameter would be kind of infinite what if i use two times diameter minus one can this be already hard or is this still easy we don't know yet so if someone's interested in this and wants to do some work with us just contact us <laughs> okay similarly we went to the steiner version of the problem which is the are connected. So we have terminals that you, you want them to reach each other, no? And if the maximum label here is unbounded, so you can use what the, whatever you want, then the problem becomes empty hard. Uh, yeah, something complete. But we found an FPT algorithm for it with respect to the number of terminals that you have, the number of vertices you want to connect among each other. And um, in the case where also the, up, the H is restricted, the problem becomes W1 hard with respect to the number of terminals. Okay. Is there any question up to now? No. So I see that I'm talking really fast and I'm halfway through with time, but I have less than half slides. Um, I'm yeah. gonna, yeah. what? You can slow down, you can relax. Yeah, I am relaxed. I use, I talk really fast, so I'm, I always try to talk slower, sorry. Sorry, but I try to wave a lot, so I hope you understand stuff. <laughs> I'm gonna give you two ideas of our algorithms. Uh, first one is gonna be the one when you give me a graph and the age and say, what is the minimum number? Or can you make it like, yeah, what is the minimum number of labels for every vertex to reach each other? And the other one 
it's gonna i'm gonna repeat it later okay so minimum age labeling again uh i have a, a bound on some age and the graph is an arbitrary graph every vertex wants to reach each other so temporal connectivity in the graph uh, how do we prove it's empty complete we have a reduction from the monotone max xr3 satisfiability problem so what is this giant piece of satisfiability problem we have a conjunct conjunction of XOR clauses. So the clause is satisfied when two literals are not the same. Uh, all variables have to be non-negated and each variable appears exactly three times. And uh, because it's maximize maximization problem, uh, it's like you want to maximize the, the, you want to find an assignment that maximizes the most clauses like that. And the pro that problem is MP hard, of course, yeah. So what do we do for every variable that uh, exists in the satisfiability formula? We create a variable gadget, which looks like this. It has one source, S, and it has three things on top, T's, or like we can imagine this, that we have one base and three branches. And each branch corresponds to um, each appearance of, a, of this variable. So variable appears three times and it has three branches. And now how do we connect two variables among each other see when they it's uh, if they are if they appear together in the same clause for example this is uh, uh, a clause where the first the left variable xi is gonna uh, it's it's th in third appearance and the second variable it's in first appearance so we just like the third branch of first variable we join it with the first branch of the second variable the some small differences here how we make these connections but yeah they are appear, third and first appearance this kind of makes it like a clause and everything else we add these blue and red edges which are a lot of them but they're important for us and if two variables don't appear in the same clause ever we just put these blue and orange blue and red edges in between them and just make something like that and we do this for all variables that for all pairs of variables and now the idea when we construct from a formula we construct this graph so what do we do now is we first prove that the diameter of this graph is 10 so the graph is going to be huge but the diameter is still going to be just 10. Um, then um, the idea is okay if i assign a variable to be true we're going to label all all left paths so in this case, sorry. Okay. So in this case, like um, S i has to be able to reach all t's and vice versa, but not just S and t's has to reach among each other all vertices on the path. So yeah, one side would correspond for variable to be true, and like when I say why one side, I mean this side. This means true. Everything goes on left, and false would mean on the other side and we say that a clause is going to be satisfied if only one side of the shared fork shared branch is going to be labeled so uh, if you remember before let's say if this branch was together with another variable we would have here some edges going to another variable gadget and if they are if one is true and one is false then we would just use labels on one side but if they wouldn't be we would use labels on both sides and we would get some extra labels here and in that case like using this we we get we prove the theorem or we prove this in in quality that if we get some optimum labeling for uh, this close these gadgets this temporal graph that we built from our uh, formula is going to be of some size of polynomial in n and k we have a certain number but i just didn't want to write it down because it's not important so much here then this is going to be true if and only if we satisfy at least k clauses so some kind of like like that and okay this actually finishes the proof so the problem when given a graph you want to connect everyone among each other temporarily and you give me an h uh, the maximum label i can use uh, the problem is empty hard so how does this prove like here the maximum label we used was just 10 to the yeah Okay, and then another problem that we wanted to do is show that the 
when you give me a set of terminals and say, okay, I don't care which is your maximum label you're going to use, you can use whatever you want, but just these terminals, can you connect them among each other so that you use the minimum number of labels? This problem is um, in FPT with respect to the number of terminals we have. And the one crucial property that was, it seemed so easy and obvious, but was a bit long and hard to prove, is that uh, for uh, every, there exists an optimal solution that uses this minimum number of labels that is gonna look like a tree or a tree with a C4. Why a C4? C4 is, okay, in general, in general graph, if you give me an arbitrary graph, the, the best way you can label it using the least number of labels is that you just find a spanning tree. You put two labels on each edge, but one edge can have just one label. Because if you remember a path example, just at the beginning, the one edge had one label. But in a C4, it's actually even better if you just have a C4, let's A, B, C, D, and you have two, three, two, three. So these are rich, everything can reach each other if you have something like that. So C4 is a special case uh, of labeling stuff. And therefore also here gave, gave us some problem. And as I said, like if it was just uh, a tree, optimal solution always, then it's kind of easy. You know, you would find a Steiner tree and just like label it. But in our case, we also had to prove that um, tree and the tree with the C4 is an optimal solution, that there doesn't exist something else. For example, like even if there would be like a giant cycle, uh, you would imagine, okay, if I just want to connect two endpoints, if I go one side here and the other side here, this is also a solution, but we can make some modifications and turn it just into a path and use the same number of labels. So there can be other solutions with a minimum number of labels, but there exists one which is a tree or a tree with a C4. That's the, the, the message here. And how did, uh, if you believe me that this crucial property, that this property holds, then the procedure is kind of, it's easier, I can't say easy. So we use an FPT algorithm that solves Steiner tree. And then now at this point, we can check um, the, for every cycle, or for every cycle of length four, if it gives us a better solution. So if we can include it, can we get something better? And because FPT, we have an FPT algorithm for Steiner trees and there are, for for the check for every four cycle is into the four running time this is still fpt so we're quite happy and basically i would stop here and thank you all for the attention and ask you for some questions i think doesn't have this sorry sorry i was muted thank you very much Nina. thank you for the nice talk. Um, I will definitely not ask any question. But, uh, but Thomas, uh, Thomas, please. Okay, uh, yeah, so uh, the first problem you mentioned was the min labeling and you said you have a polynomial algorithm for that. Yeah. And I just want to ask, can you say briefly how difficult that algorithm is or what the idea of that algorithm is? Of course, um, so you just uh, find a spanning tree and label it. But even better, if you know there is a C4, use a C4, label first C4, and kind of build a spanning tree out of it. So basically looking for a spanning tree. That's, okay, that's any spanning tree works, it doesn't have to be a, a spanning tree with a special property, any spanning tree works. So if there are no C4s, any spanning tree works. If there are C4s, then include the C, like you can imagine C4, like just smooshing it down into a vertex and just building a spanning tree out of it. And this is, yeah, the algorithm. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Yeah. Yeah, well. Yeah, so yeah, the C4 gives us like one, just like one difference, so one label difference. So that, that's not big, yeah. Yeah, then uh, that, yeah, because in that case, I mean, you can always find, so yeah, the thing is on the spanning tree, you can build a spanning tree with diameter D, no? So everything's the diameter D away. And then you, 
you could could you get something out of that because you, you could get the maximum the upper bound for labels because from that of course but no maybe you could get when it yeah yeah yeah, yeah i'm thinking of that case also yeah in that case so you can't you cannot say anything about in general because like on cycles for example you're going to have a kind of n squared variables or d squared if d is the diameter or d so this diameter and on every edge like maybe you have the at most the label so you can have this d squared labels at most and in cycles you actually come to this limit so you have to also see what kind of graphs you have then yeah so we can approximate it up to a square <laughs> for sure uh, sorry, one um, uh, one question, in it because we cannot really hear the questions from the audience. Uh, you should, and every every ah, should either so either repeat in, in their own. If I repeat word. the question, yeah. Yeah, or or if we even better if we have a microphone. If I give them, uh, yeah, but we just use one microphone. I would we have uh, only one microphone. Okay. The person who is talking has to repeat the question. The question was if we can approximate the solution for a number of labels in the age uh, case like in general but we can't do in general because on cycles we will use this squared label so the approximation won't be uh with some constant factor away i mean great thank yeah. you okay pierre luigi has a question uh, yes uh, lonina thanks for the nice talk uh, and uh, i think that uh, the your problem is uh, uh, somehow related to uh, well let's say the main open question of my talk the, this afternoon um, and the question is uh, your underlying graph is uh, undirected right yes what happens if the graph is directed well in that case we haven't thought of it but in some cases it would be easier no because you can you have just a certain certain path that you can follow and maybe you would choose the shortest one i don't know you, you might have many you might have many paths yeah but if you want to connect everything to everyone yeah i don't know anyway um, uh, uh, because yeah. uh, you would see if you would be if you would be there you would see at the end of, of the talk uh, I, I think this is really uh, uh, I, I have the feeling that it's a uh, it's different and it can be tougher. Yeah, but Paul made now a really good uh, observation that the reductions, at least our MP hardness reduction, should be easier in that case, because we were struggling a lot with connecting everything to everyone. But now we have directions, and so yeah, because we making those gadgets in MP hard case was hard because everyone wanted to reach everyone. But now the direction means that you don't have to connect everyone. Just the ones that can reach each other in the underlying graph already, no? Uh, but the graph can be strongly connected, right? Okay, if the graph is strongly connected, then yes. But then for non-strongly connected graphs. <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Strongly connected is a subclass. But, yeah. um... but in that setting, you'd still get an extra label for free, even if you have two edges going in both directions. So if you replace an undirected edge, with two directed edges, you could label the two directed edges separately, right? Yeah. So it yeah, could still make the problem easier in that way. Uh, but you, I mean, you're not, in the undirected case, you are forced to give the same label, right? To the two edges. Yes. In directed, you wouldn't have Sorry, to. Sorry, can you repeat uh, what you said, uh, Pirli? In the undirected? In the if you do this reduction from undirected, I think you have to force to give the same labels to some edges, right? Yes, because if you would go from A to B at time two, in our case, in directed, you would have to go A, B, B, A at time two if you use our reduction, like yeah. as it is. So that's there might still be a, a reduction, okay, slightly more complicated than the one David uh, said, where, where you, you replace a vertex with some gut kind of gadget so that you, you don't force the two edges to have the same label, but but this is just uh, an idea. Yeah. Okay. The last thirty seconds is uh, maybe maybe there is some bug there. Yeah. 
I mean, there was something about directed cases and George and Eleni worked on it with Paul, I guess also, yes. uh, which was directed case and you had labels and you wanted to remove some of them. What is the minimum or maximum, maximum number, number of them you can remove? And they proved stuff for the directed case. And yeah, we also have a, a result for directed trust, no? That minimum labeling is polynomial time solvable. Is it even minimum H one? Yeah, minimum H labeling on directed graphs is polynomial time solvable. Yeah, we we <laughs> on DAG <laughs> on directed acyclic graphs. Ah, on DAG. Okay. Yeah. On, so the situation. Okay. On the easy, let me, easy case. Yeah, let me let me clarify let me clarify a bit uh, the, 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 the so for directed acyclic graphs we know that it's um, it's a uh, it is polynomial. Sorry, uh, for for non DAGs. We have proved in, in the past that if you are if if the input is a given um, a given directed graph, that is, however, this one was not uh, strongly connected, yeah. and uh, it was not a duck because it had some small cycles of size two. Yeah. So a goes to b and b goes to a. Then it's np hard and even apx hard to to, to, to approximate the, the minimum num the total minimum number of labels such that uh, such that everything that is connected in the original graph remains connected in the temporal graph and uh, the same we proved with the Lenin and in another paper the same holds in the reverse in the following sense if i give you um, uh, an even totally connected undirected graph, uh, totally temporally connected undirected graph, uh, what's the minimum number of labels that you can, the maximum number of labels that you can remove by not affecting the temporal connectivity. And this is also APX hard, but, uh, but, but to do this, you know, we chose a very, very, very complicated and weird uh, initial labeling. That forced you to to somehow encode the SATs inside this. So that's a brief, brief summary. But but I'm looking forward to, to see what you, what you mean in, in in your talk here, Luigi. Yeah. Any more questions? Yeah, we have one more. Uh, what the, the, the synthetic the, 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 so you say that uh, one of them uh, is simultaneously with the uh, bounded edge was the way one hard? Uh, is that the one metric of the way one? So, what the standard three one was? Standard three is the bounded edge. Uh, yeah, with the bounded edge, yeah. So the way one hard. Was W1 hard, yeah. Do you, have, do you know if it's uh, the way one complete or do you think it's higher in the W1? The w if, uh, so the question is if it's higher in the W structure. We had a reduction from multicolored clique. So from that, we just determined that it's W1 hard, but we didn't go further. We didn't go further. So maybe it's higher, but uh, yeah. I don't know yet. Yeah. Okay. Okay, thank you very much, Nina. Again, I stopped the recording. Good.